Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up, guys? Pastor Jim here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church, and I want to take a moment and say thank you for tuning in today and being a part of our online church fam. Woohoo! Hey, take a moment, would you please, and let us know where you're watching from. If you're on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, just take a moment, type that out, and while you're at it, you can tell us how the weather is in your neck of the woods. And today is National Pie Day. So take a moment and let us know, what is your favorite pie? Maybe it's chocolate pie. Maybe it's pumpkin pie. Maybe it's apple pie or sweet potato pie. My favorite, just if you're wondering, key lime pie, baby. That is the best kind of pie right there. Hey, we want to get into our series, but before we do, I want to take a moment and ask a big favor from you. Uh, we are switching the platforms on how we gather our information and connect with you. And so even if you have filled out a digital connection card in the past, we're asking that you would take a moment right now and fill out a new digital connection card. And it's really simple. Right now at the lower third of your screen, you're gonna see this really weird pixelated box. Now, if you've been to a restaurant lately, you're getting used to seeing these things. They're called QR codes. So if you take your phone in the camera part, portion of your phone and hold it over that little QR code, it'll pop up a box for your internet browser and it will directly link you to our connection, our digital connection card, I should say. And just take a moment, fill that out, and let us connect with you besides you being a part of this gathering this morning. I want to give a shout out for those of you that are connecting with us. I want to say good morning to my friend Sebastian and Rachel that watch every week here in Thousand Oaks. Good morning to my friend Garth who watches here. And I want to say good morning to James, our friend from Jerusalem, Israel that watches every week. So everybody that's watching online, we are so thankful that you are part of this amazing family. We're an international ministry. Who would have known 12 months into the pandemic, Atmosphere Church would have the reach that we're having. So we're just so grateful for all of you, all right? So take a moment to fill that connection card out. Now, if you missed last week's talk on Jonah part one, I highly encourage you to go back and check it out. It's going to make a lot more sense uh, after you hear this message today. Uh, but today we are doing part two of the series we're simply calling Jonah. Now today's talk, I've actually called it Breakthrough at the Bottom. Breakthrough at the Bottom. And you'll see why I'm calling it that as we get further into the message. So I'm going to pray and we're going to dive in to chapter one and chapter two of the book of Jonah. So pray with me. Father, thank you so much, God, for the work that you are doing in each of our hearts. And Lord, my prayer is simply, God, bring us more of your spirit. Bring us more of your power. Bring us more of your presence in our life, God, so that, Lord, the deep work you're doing in us can translate for you to be able to do a great work through us. And we thank you in advance for how you're going to do that. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen and amen. All right, so I want to first tell you a story about my own life. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you thought your life was going to end? And possibly maybe it involved a vehicle. I, I'll never forget, it was a few years ago, I would often drive from California to our church in Vegas. And so I was on that I-15 a lot. It's this interstate that goes there. And one time I was driving from California to Vegas, there was this freak snowstorm. Doesn't happen very often, but it happened to ha uh, happen 
it happened to happen uh, when I was driving there in my truck. And so as I'm driving past Baker, which like is typically the hottest place, you know, on the earth in the wintertime, it happened to be snowing. And the snow was kind of collecting on the interstate. And I was a little concerned about it, but it wasn't too much. And we were climbing this hill. I was by myself, actually. We were climbing this hill. And out of nowhere, my truck decides to just slide off the highway. Now, it didn't slide to the right. It slid to the middle. And what made this such a dangerous situation is I couldn't stop it. It was sliding, slide all the way to the middle. Now, this part of the interstate, there's no like highway divider. There's no rails. So the, the gap is so wide between the other side of the freeway, they decided, I guess, they didn't need one. And so here my truck is slide. I wasn't even going that fast. It's sliding and sliding in the snow. It goes all the way through the middle of this highway, and it rests. My truck ends up resting on the highway of the oncoming traffic and my car is like aimed at the oncoming traffic and so as my car was sliding i could hear that carrie underwood song jesus take the wheel take it from my hands i was like oh jesus take the wheel i mean i was help me jesus like i was i was crying out as as hard as and as loud as i could when I was sliding, because there was literally nothing I could do. And so when the car stopped, I was just embracing for impact because that is a highway that all the trucks are taking. And I kind of like, you know, once it's the truck stopped, I, I looked around and there were no cars coming. And I thought, that's so strange. And so I was able to get my car turned around, go back through the middle of the highway and get back on my way to Vegas and other cars were pulled off, like looking at me like, dude, how are you still alive? And I was just like, man, praise God. I get to the bottom of the hill on the other side of the traffic and I, and I uh, listened to the highway station and they were saying that they had stopped the traffic, not because of the snow, but because they were doing some demolition in this little canyon area. So all the trucks were stopped at the bottom of the hill. The very day I slide into the oncoming lanes, of traffic. All right. So that was a huge God story, but super scary. It was the ride of my life where I knew I needed God. Have you ever been in a wild ride for your life? Well, this is the story of Jonah. Jonah is in the super wild ride for his life. And last week we talked about part one. We call it This Is Us because really this isn't the story of an ancient prophet. This is the story of all of our lives. Like we can see ourselves in this godly man of God, prophet of God who's not very godly uh, named Jonah. This is us. So I'm going to pick up in uh, Jonah chapter one, verse 11. It says, the sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? And Jonah says, pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So that's chapter one. So here he is. Chapter two is all about Jonah being in the fish. Let's go to verse one of chapter two. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, in the Hebrew that's Sheol, I called for help and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Get the picture? To the roots of the mountains, I sank down. The earth beneath bared, barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, 
and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish at that moment, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Crazy experience, right? This is Jonah's Jesus take the wheel moment for his life. And there are four things I want to remove from the story from today's section of, of the book of Jonah that we really can learn from and even apply to our own life. Here's, here's the first observation if you're taking notes. It took Jonah sinking to the bottom for him to look up to God. I want you to think about Jonah's story and think about the progressive steps that chapter one and chapter two tell us. It started by him avoiding God's directive to him, God's assignment for him, right? So he goes down to Joppa and he finds a ship and he goes down on the ship to sleep. Remember that? And then the sailors, you know, throw him in the water. So he goes down to the water and then he ends up down in the fish. So think about the progression. He goes down, 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 down. This, my friends, is the result of what sin does for our life. Sin is always progressive. It never stays at the level that it's at. Sin gone unchecked in our life, disobedience gone undealt with in our life will continue to bring us down, 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 and down to, to a place where finally we reach the very bottom. I'm sure you've heard this term before. He's hit rock bottom. This is the place where we have to look up <laughs> Because we can no longer look down because there's nothing beneath us. We've hit rock bottom. So as we think about this, maybe I'm speaking right to your life today. And this is what some of you are feeling. Your finances squeezing you. Your spouse leaving you. Your health failing you. Your addiction destroying you. Do any of those situations sound familiar to you? But my question is, we've talked about Jonah's bottom. Let's talk about your bottom. <laughs> that sounds funny. But honestly, what is it going to take to happen against your life for God to finally get your attention and for you to cry uncle and say, God, I need you in my life. Because here's what I know. The moment you cry out to God, just like Jonah did, God is going to come close to you. This is how it works. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes extreme brokenness for people to come to this place of realizing that they need God in their life. But let me tell you this. Your first step to your comeback is calling out to God in your trouble. Psalm 46 verse 1. It says it this way. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. It doesn't matter how you got yourself into the mess that you're in. The fact is. The moment you call out to God in your mess. God will show up on scene. And start leading you out of the pit. That you have found yourself in. You know years ago I had a friend of mine that just totally dropped off the radar screen. I mean, he, we lost contact, you know, for 10 years, didn't hear anything from this buddy. And I, he was my childhood friend. And out of nowhere, I get a call from his ex-wife. And she says, hey, I, I need to tell you about your friend and he's in trouble. And so she started telling me that he has a major drinking issue and that he had lost his job, he has lost his health and, and uh, that he's pretty much like dying. And she asked if I would come and try to talk to him and try to help him. And so I reached out to him and found out where he was at. And I went to his house and I just sat with him. And he was telling me that every morning he would drink a bottle of tequila to where he would pass out by 9 a.m. And he was doing this on a regular basis. He was getting sick, but he couldn't stop the drinking. And I remember that morning telling him, Bro, 
if you don't stop this right now, it's going to cost you your life. So we got we to gotta do something. And I knew some people, some friends of mine at Teen Challenge, and I called them and I said, hey, my friend's in trouble. Uh, would you accept him? And we worked out some details, and, and they said, yes, we can, we can take him. We have a bed for him. And so I talked to him, and I said, hey, look, they, they have a, a bed for you. It's a program. It's a year. It's free. And then he told me at first, he's like, no, I can't. I'm going to lose my job. You know, I'm going to, this is a big sacrifice. And I looked him in the eye and I said, if you don't take this opportunity, this alcohol is going to take your life. So you can either take a year off of your job or you could pretty much take out your life. And that made sense to him. So we drove him down to Teen Challenge, got him enrolled. He went through the whole program. Wow, he saw victory in his life. And today, my friend Dale is still alive, man. And God is doing a great work in this guy. All because he realized that sometimes your breakthrough is at the bottom. Now, don't wait till you're at the bottom for your breakthrough. Like, like give your life to God. Don't, don't wait for you, you, you to lose your health or lose your marriage or, or lose your finances or, or, or lose other things that you preciously love. Get right with God today. And that's what we learn from the story of Jonah. Now, I will tell you, I made a little note here too for parents. You know, there's a, a phenomenon right now called snow plow parenting. And this is where you remove all the obstacles to, to make your kids get to the place that they need to be, right? Or you feel like they need to be. So you're, you're kind of plowing the way so that they can get there. But let me tell you, snowplow parents create soft adult kids. So sometimes people have to go into the pit in order for them to be able to recognize the promises of God for their life. And if you're always in a rescue mission for your children, they will never be able to embrace the power of God and the provision of God and the promises of God for their life. Let God be their rescuer. So sometimes you're actually pushing your kids down further into the pit by trying to get them out of the pit rather than allowing them to have some struggle so that they can see the mighty, powerful hand of God in their life. I'm speaking to some parent out there right now that God is telling you, stop enabling your kid because what's gonna happen is it's gonna cost them their life. So we gotta look at that, all right? So here's the second point, write this down. Jonah blew it big time, but God did not give up on him. He blew it big time, but God didn't give up on him. Look at verses three through five again. It says, he hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing water threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Jonah was in trouble, and he felt like God was finished with him. He felt like God was just over him. And this idea of of being thrown into the heart of the seas, this was a figure of speech for the Hebrews at the time that pretty much meant that God had, had done away with me, that God was finished with me. It it refers to this place, the heart of the seas, where God would like put like your sin. And we read about that in, in a couple of different passages we'll get to in a second. But here's what's happening. Jonah thinks instead of God taking his sin there, that God has actually taken him there. And that's not the way God works. Especially, this is not what Jesus has proclaimed to us. Maybe you have some thought bubbles in your head that's saying, is God done with me? Have I disqualified myself? Have I done something so bad that I've lost God's favor forever? I mean, we all kind of struggle with those thought bubbles when we maybe do something we know that we're not supposed to do. But yet that was not the case. Not only was God not through with Jonah, that he was going to give Jonah a do-over, a mulligan for you golfers out there. He was going to take another shot at it. God was going to give him another shot at it, I should say. So here, Jonah goes from thinking God was done with me to God giving him a do-over, a mulligan. 
if you could jump into a time machine and have a do-over moment for your past, can you think of a moment right now that you would go back to, a decision that you made, some kind of a thing that happened, you're like, yes, I know exactly where I would jump in my DeLorean, I would go back and say, I'm gonna change that decision. I know for me, I think about in the early 90s, some guy came up to me and, and he was a friend from church. And he goes, Jim, you've got to invest in this c coffee company. It's like, it's going to be big. It's going to be, they're going to be all over the, the world and you can buy stock at it right now. I go, a coffee company? Like, what are, like, what's the coffee company called? He goes, Starbucks. I go, how are they going to make a living selling coffee all day? Like, that's so weird. No, bro. Like, that's a bad investment. Man, if I could get in a time machine and go back and invest at that point, because wouldn't you know it, five years later, there were Starbucks popping all over the place. And here, you know, there are some of you that you go buy Starbucks every day. It's part of your routine. And that's probably one moment I could go back, but I can think of probably a dozen moments. But here's the great news about the gospel. This is the great news about what Jesus has accomplished for us. Because Jesus went to the place that Jonah thought God had cast him out to and actually went there and he says, I'm gonna take all of your sin with me and I'm gonna make sure the sin stays away. So here's the truth of what Jesus tells us. God hasn't forgotten you. God has simply forgotten your sin. And that's important for us to understand because if our sin is removed from us, then we are set up for a do-over, a do-over at life. Micah 7, verse 19, it says, you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. This is, this is what God declares to us. In Jeremiah 31, 34, talking about the Messiah, he says, and I will forgive and forget their sins. God hasn't forgotten you, my friend. God simply wants to forget your sin so that he can move you past your past. Come on, somebody, hit that like button. God wants to move your past from your past. He wants to move you from your past. That's a good word for all of us to be able to listen to. Okay, so here it is. Number three, write this down. Jonah gave thanks and praise to God while he was surrounded by stench, by stinkiness. I, one of the worst smells in my mind is fish odor. I don't know how many of you would agree with me. You can hit the like button and say, yes, that is stinky stuff. Think about where Jonah is at. He is surrounded by stench, fishy odor all around him because he's in the belly of the fish. Now, I love this truth that we get to read because in the midst of the stench, he's surrounded by the stench. He begins to praise and, and shout thanks to God in the midst of the stench. This is such a powerful uh, truth for our faith that we don't wait to praise God and give thanks to God when everything smells rosy. The time to give our shouts of praise and our shouts of thanksgiving is when things are stinky. And it's through our shouts of praise that God actually launches us into the place that he's called us to live at. Think about that. What's the next verse after it says this in chapter, chapter two, verse nine? It says, but I will, I will with shouts of grateful praise will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. When he does this, he just like has an attitude shift because that's what praise will do. That praise and declaration that you're making to who God is, regardless of the circumstances you're in, shifts your attitude. And a lot of you know, man, your attitude lately has not been good. It probably maybe smells like the stench that you're living in. And our job, our goal as followers of Jesus is not let the stench of our circumstances impact our attitudes. And so if you want to get rid of the stinchy attitude, then you lift up your shouts of praise and your gratefulness to what God has done because through the shouts of praise, he's able to change the very circumstances that you're in. Don't believe me? Go and review Acts 16. We just talked about this, right? Uh, a few weeks ago, we had Pastor Kevin 
Nickerson with us and, and he led us through this idea of praise. And it says in Acts 16 that, that when Paul and Silas were in prison, about midnight, they started singing songs to God. Midnight represents the darkest hour of the night. So when, it was at, when, when they were at their darkest, they lifted up their voices. And guess what happened? The chains fell off. The prison doors opened. God had given them a breakthrough for their praise that they gave out. And this is such a good concept for us to learn. That when we come out with a shout, that God brings us out of the circumstances that are holding us back. Think about what happened. The very next verse, after he gives these shouts of praise, the fish spits them up. So he gives a shout and the fish gives them up. And I think that is so good for us to understand. That if you want to have a breakthrough in the circumstances that you're in, you got to come out with a shout. Just, t- just text that right now. Say, I'm coming out with a shout. Put that down. Give me some, some likes and, and some heart emojis, right? I'm coming out with a shout because that's what praise and gratitude does. Gratitude is the gateway to releasing you from the bondage of your problem. It's the gateway of releasing you from the bondage of your problem. First Thessalonians 5.18. It says, in everything... Say with me, in everything, in everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks. When's the last time you did this? This should be an active part of how you pray to God. Some people just look at a prayer life as just like you give your shopping list to God and say, God, here's all that I need for you to do. But that's not going to help you specifically get you out of the place circumstantially it starts with praise it starts with thanksgiving so i challenge you in your prayer time this week before you get to the shopping list and all the things that you need god to do for you take five ten minutes and just start thanking god for all that he's done and how he's removed your past from your past right just start there and just see how it shifts your attitude And no longer are you going to have the stench of the circumstances giving you a stenchy attitude, all right? Here's the fourth thing that we learn, and that is the very thing that swallowed Jonah up became the vehicle God used to save his life. The very thing that swallowed him up, the instrument of death, you might say, God turned around and used it as a vehicle for life. If it wasn't for that fish, Jonah would have just drowned in that water. But that instrument of death, as Jonah looked at it, became the vehicle that God used to bring him life. We we have to stop labeling the things in our life as problems. Because the very thing we're labeling as a problem may be, in fact, God's provision helping launch you into the promise that he's given you for your life. It causes you to take a step back, doesn't it? Like, whoa, wait a minute. It says in verse 17 of chapter one that God provided a fish. To me, this smells like the gospel. Because think about what the gospel is, that Jesus died for our sin, but that through his death on the cross, he actually brought us life through his resurrection. And this is such a powerful gospel truth that Jesus actually used the story of Jonah to talk about his own destiny, his own mission. It says in Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, he answered a wicked and adulterous generation has asked for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation, condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. Like Jesus is like the anti Jonah. Think about it, where where Jonah, the man of God, was self-centered. 
He didn't care about what others were doing and didn't want them to receive the grace of God. Jesus was other-centered, and he cared very much about the other people that were in this world. And so here Jesus and the cross absorbs all of our sin, all of our disobedience. He takes it upon himself and he moves out into this place beyond this realm that Jonah thought God had cast him out to. And Jesus goes there and he's able to use the instrument of his own death to be the vehicle to bring us new life. That is so profound. And I want you to really think about what this means for our lives because we're all a little bit like Jonah. Jonah's life is a little bit too much like our own. And we need to embrace the anti-Jonah. We need to embrace Jesus, who through his death brought us the opportunity for new life. And some of you, you're drowning in your sin. You are being swallowed up by your own mistakes. And God is here today using this story of this ancient prophet to speak about the story of your life. And you're never too far gone for the love of God to be able to reach you right where you're at. And I believe he's using this word today to bring you into a relationship with him. And that through Jesus' death and resurrection of life, you, my friend, are going to be able to be born again. You're going to be able to, just like Jonah was spit out and given a second chance at life, God wants to give you, my friend, a second chance at life. And this time, he's going to help you, and he's going to lead your life from the inside with the Spirit living in you. And if you haven't made that decision to say yes to following Jesus, to receiving his Spirit to come and live in you, to give, for God to give you that mulligan, that ability to take another shot at it, then I want to encourage you to make that decision today with me right now as I pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer after me. And this is where your faith begins. This is where your new life starts. So pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. For I acknowledge to you today that I'm far from you and that I'm drowning in my mess, but that God, you came to this earth through your son Jesus, and you swallowed up death so that I might be set up for life. And I pray today that you would begin a new work in me, that you would start my life over again. And I thank you for you being the God of second chances. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. That's it. That's how simple it is. And I really believe that the Spirit of God, because of that prayer, is now living in you. So what we like to do is partner with you and connect with you, help you, send you a Bible or any other resources that you need to help you grow in your faith. So what we ask you to do is text the Atmosphone at 805-807-9444. Let us know that you said yes to Jesus. All you have to do is say, I said yes and we will get you uh, some resources to help you grow in your faith. And man, what a great way to end and go into worship because some of you right now, your breakthrough is found in your shout out. So shout your praises to God because the one who can deliver you from your problems, the one who can deliver you from the pit is the one that is here right now and we need to give him praise. So praise on, my friends. Let's, let's worship. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be a part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. 
Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.